Hello and welcome to another exam paper walkthrough solutions. Uh, today we're looking at the Edexcel GCSE practice papers and we're looking at set 22, um, very modern, most up to date paper I could find. Uh, this is from spring 23 um, and we're uh, in spring 23 pretty much, so this is very current. <clears throat> Um, so I'll be doing this in uh, video chunks of 10, provided I've got no major issues. Um, I'll do a page of the paper and then I will um, talk about where the marks come from for each question. Um, I'm using um, quite an old emulator, uh, just so you can see it on the screen. Uh, I've not really got the modern one. Um, I've got a version of it, but it doesn't work particularly well. Uh, so I'll be using that, uh, although there's nothing wrong with uh, you. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with your more modern versions. <clears throat> OK. Um, so uh, I'll make a start. Uh, th this paper is out of 94 marks. Um, so uh, this is, if they're saying roughly a minute a mark, uh, you're going to be looking for, should be should be able to do it in just under, well, just over an hour and a half. So we'll, we'll, I'll keep a kind of a, a look on that as well. OK, um, so we'll kick off with question one. So find the value of uh, square root of 31.36. So I'm not going to do anything difficult or tricky here. I'm just going to type it into my calculator. And press the equals button. It doesn't ask for it to a specific degree of accuracy. Um, so I'm going to assume that it, it actually has an exact value, which is 5.6. OK, and question two. 14 to the power 3, so 14 to the power 3. So that gives me 2,744, 2,744. Right, um, question 2. Jordan buys 256 notebooks. He buys the notebooks in packs of 8 notebooks. Each pack of 8 notebooks costs £2.46. Uh, work out how much the 256 notebooks cost Jordan. Um, so in effect, we're doing um, 256 divided by eight times by uh, 2.48. And that will give us uh, the total price. Um, it might be slightly awkward if this doesn't give us a whole number answer, but it does. So we're looking at uh, 79.36. So £79.36. OK, and uh, that's it for that page. So uh, if I bring up the Mart scheme, I think I've got a copy of it open. Yeah. Okay. Um, so question one, we're looking at 5.6 of B1 mark, uh, unconditional mark for the value 5.6. Um, my second one again is a B1 mark for 2,744. Uh, for question two then, uh, we are going for three marks available here. So let me just... Uh, an M1 for complete the correct first step, which they're suggesting is 256 divided by 8. So I'll give myself an M1 there. Um, and then M1 for complete method or for... Uh, Okay, I'm, um, for complete method, so M1 and then A1 for my answer. Okay, then. Um, so, uh, question three. Uh, so, uh, Bridget records the distance she ran on each of three days. The, re the table shows her results Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we've got distances in different units. Uh, Bridget set has off the target of running a total of at least 30 kilometres on these three days. Uh, show that Bridget did not achieve her target. Um, so I need to convert uh, these into, uh, well, I'm going to convert them all into kilometres. So that one's going to be equal to 5.950 kilometres. And that one's going to be equal to nine kilometres. So uh, I'm adding those three totals together. So I'm going to do 5.95 plus 14.5 plus 9. And when we add those together using our calculator, and I am sure that you are all more than 
capable of uh, doing that without a calculator, but it is a calculate paper, so there'd be no marks for doing it without a calculator. OK, um, so uh, 29.45 kilometres is less than 30 kilometres. And that's going to be enough for the three marks, I'm sure. Right, um, let's have a look then. The mark scheme says uh, M1 for one correct conversion. So I'll award it for my first one. So I've got M1 there. M1 for complete method for adding with their adjusted figures. So M1 there. And then A1 for... Um, Okay, so, and then we'll go A1 there. Right, uh, question four then. Uh, Jacob has brought a chicken. He's going to use this rule to work out the number of minutes it will take to cook the chicken. Okay, uh, cooking time in minutes. Multiply the chicken's weight in kilograms by 40, then add 30. Uh, so it does say cooking time in minutes. I nearly didn't spot that. Uh, the weight of Jacob's uh, chicken is 2.6 kilograms. Work out, uh, use this rule to work out the number of minutes it will take to cook Jacob's chicken. Uh, so the weight is already in kilograms, so I'm doing 2.6 times by 40 and then plus 30. So um, as with a lot of these questions, I will write down what I'm going to type into my calculator because I'm going to assume that anything worth more than one mark will get me a mark for showing what I'm going to write down. So I'm, I'm not needing to convert this into hours or anything. So 134 minutes. Right. Um, the following week, Jacob buys another chicken. Uh, <coughs> he uses the rule and works out that it will take two hours and 40 minutes to cook the chicken. Uh, work out the total weight of the chicken. Uh, so I'm going to convert two hours and 40 minutes into um, minutes, first of all. So I'm going to do 120. Well, I'm going to do 120. Really, let's go into to a bit more detail. I'm going to do number of hours times by 60 because there are 60 minutes in an hour plus 40. That's going to be 120 plus 40 is going to be 160 minutes. So this chicken will take 160 minutes to cook. And if I'm kind of using this formula, uh, I'm going to introduce W to stand for the chicken's weight. So I'm going to go uh, 40 W, so 40 times by the weight plus uh, 30 is going to be equal to 160 minutes. So I'm going to minus 30 from both sides. So 40 W is going to be equal to 130. And then divide by 40 is going to be uh, W is equal to 34, 137, 130 divided by 4 is 32.5. And I've made a mistake there. It should have been divided by 40. I was going to say that's a very heavy chicken, so that's much more like it. So 3.25, 3.25 kilograms. Uh, does that make sense? Well, it's got to be heavier than this one, and it's got to be considerably heavier. So yeah, 3.25. And I believe that might be it for this page. It is so, uh, I'll go to the mark scheme then for question four. Uh, so for the first one, we've got an M1 for our method, which is, and they've written it as 2.6 times by 40 plus 30. So that's M1 and then an A1 for 134. Um, for part B, work out the weight of the chicken. So uh, how have they done this as a method? So they have done M1 for converting two hours um, to minutes. So there we go. So that's M1 there. Uh, it's then said an M1 for a complete method. So M1 and then an A1 for my 3.25. Right. Um, question five then. Uh, work out the value showing all figures on your calculator display. So I need, um, I kind of struggle why. I struggle to show working for this being a two mark question because I will literally type it in exactly as it appears. Times by 
and I want to divide that by 8 minus root 33.7. So do a double check that I've typed everything in right. 15.2 times by 4.1 divided by 8, and I have not. I need a minus there. Minus the square root of 3.7. So those are all the figures on my calculated display. So I'm looking at 10.255. Nine six eight seven one. Um, right, and question six: uh, Work out the value of Q when V is equal to a half and W is equal to a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite that then and say Q is going to be equal to five times by a half squared minus a quarter. Uh, the second brackets aren't necessary, really. Um, it's a good habit, though, to put anything you substitute inside a bracket. And I'm just going to type it in like that. Uh, double check that I am happy with that. The uh, thing that I was checking was that uh, even though I, I've didn't really uh, read it fully. Uh, I assumed that the first value was the first one I was substituting in and the second value, the second value I was substituting in, which does match. So when I do that, I get the value of one. OK, and that's it for that page. So um, the mark scheme says then. <clears throat> uh, question five. So. Um, <laughs> They've suggested working out the numerator and the denominator separately. I strongly wouldn't. I would go A1. OK. Uh, for question six, work out the value of Q. So we've got an M1 for complete method, which is showing the substitution, and an A1 for the value one. Right. Question six. Uh, work out the area of the trapezium. Right. So the area of a trapezium is equal to a half of A plus B times by H, where A is the top number, uh, B is the bottom length, and H is the height. So in this case, I'm looking at a half of 6 plus 13 times by three, which is going to give me um, half of 19 times by three. Um, so we're going to have a decimal value. Um, but it would just be a 0.5. Um, so I'm just going to do it's 0 0.5 times by 19 times mm, times by three. So I'm looking at 28.5. Right, and that's it for that page. So uh, the mark scheme states an M1 for complete method. So pick up the M1 for just for that line there. And then uh, the A1 mark for the answer, 28.5. Right then, question nine. So for question nine, here are the first five terms of a number sequence. Write down the next term in the sequence. Uh, so these numbers are going up by six, it looks like. Six, and that is carrying, that pattern is carrying on. So my next number is going to be six bigger, so it's going to be 31. Explain how you work out your answer. Um, I added six to last term. Explain why 188 cannot be a term in this sequence. Um, so I would I would tend to go down this route for this question. So if we've got a common difference of six, it means that the nth term must be equal to six n. And then we look at what do we need to do to the number six to get to the number one. We would need to take away five. So that's the nth term for that sequence. Really, we're saying can 108, uh, can 
can 6n minus 5 be equal to 188, where n is a whole number? Uh, so to solve that, I would need to add 5 onto both sides. So I'd get 6n is equal to 193. And then I need to divide both sides by 6. And that would give you that n is equal to 193 divided by 6 gives you. Um, I actually want it as an improper fraction for this purpose. Uh, 32 and 1 6. So no. As n must be a whole number. Um, and that's my method for it. Um, other acceptable ways, I could say that the, all these numbers are one bigger than the six times table. Um, and 168 is not big, uh, is not one bigger than a multiple of 100 uh, of six. Um, but I, I tend to always go pretty much for that method. Um, but there we go, uh, because it actually tells you where it would be. Uh, so the 30. 30 second sequence would be uh, below 188 and then the 32nd, uh, sorry, 33rd would be above 188. Right, um, and that's it for that page. So <coughs> the mask scheme says then um, B1 for 31. It says B1 for correct ex explanation and it's got an EG, I added six, add six plus six, or showing the, the sequence 6n minus 5. Uh, so we go b1 there. And then uh, correct explanation and acceptable, it should be 187. Uh, 188 is even or not odd. 187 and 193 are in the sequence. The term ends in a 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. Uh, the sequence is odd. Um, or 6n minus 5 equals 188 gives a decimal or not a whole number. Uh, so we would pick up, we get it for that one. Right, um, so, and that was a B1 mark. Right, question nine. <clears throat> uh, table gives information about the population, correct two significant figures of each of five cities in 2018. So we've got five cities and we've got their population. Uh, right, 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power of six is an ordinary number. Uh, so that would be, uh, if it was just an eight, it would be an eight with six zeros. Uh, so we're looking at eight, eight with five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, which of the cities has the least population in 2008? Well, it's actually the power of 10 number that really uh, indicates. Um, so all of these three numbers are smaller than these three numbers because they're a, a power lower. Um, and then I look for once I've established which three I'm looking between, then I look at the front numbers. So Barcelona was the smallest. OK. And for part C, uh, work out the difference between the population of Tokyo and the population of Ahmedabad. Uh, give your answer in standard form, correct two significant figures. So I'm looking at T and A. Uh, so I'm looking at that one and uh, that one. Uh, so to do this, uh, we've got a number of ways that we could do this. Uh, I'll go for the most straightforward one. Um, this one is obviously the larger one, so I'm going to do this on my calculator in standard form. The 7, and from that I want to subtract 7.7 7 times 10 to the 6. Ugh. Times 10 to the 6. But just double check, I'm happy with that typed in like that. 3.7 times 10 to the 7 minus 7.7 7 times 10 to the 6. Yeah. I'm going to scroll down and write it again just to show. Could see the numbers and write without zooming out times 10 to the 7 minus 7.7 7 times 10 to the 6. And that gives me, and it says give your answer in standard form. Um, so I'll write it in non standard form first of all. I've got one, two, three, four, five zeros. 
So um, if I'm writing that in standard form, it needs to start with a number between one and 10. So I'm going to put 2.93 and then in effect, I'm moving the decimal point from there to there. So I've moved it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. So it would be times 10 to the seven. OK, and that's the only question on the page. So we go to the mark scheme. So this is question nine. Um, and we pick up a B1 mark for um, eight, eight, one, two, three, four, five zeros. So we've got that B1 mark. Uh, second one is a B1 mark for Barcelona. And then the third one is um, one for your method and one for your answer. Uh, so if you if you've written the answer um, uh, twenty nine million three hundred thousand and it's not in standard form, you can still pick up that one mark for the method. Uh, you lose the answer mark though because it does say in standard form. Right, question ten. Uh, so Sophie spends a total of six pounds thirty on cheese. She buys five hundred grams of cheddar cheese, two hundred grams of Stilton cheese. The cost of the cheddar cheese is nine pounds. 20 for one kilogram work out the cost of one kilogram of stilton um okay right so uh i want to do so she buys 500 grams and that's the price for a kilogram so i want to do um obviously she buys half of that so nine pounds 20 divided by two and i actually want to take that away from the total price that she spent on cheese do that spent on cheese So I'm going to type it like that. So 630 minus, uh, and I'm going to type it in as a fraction, and I've messed my decimal point out. Six pounds 30 take away uh, nine. I want to do it as a fraction. Nine pounds 20 divided by two. So she spent one pound 70 on 200 grams. Stilton. So if we want the price for one kilogram, well, that's five times the amount. So I need to times that by five. So times that by five gives me eight pounds fifty. Uh, so there we go, eight pounds fifty. Okay, right. So uh, if we go to the mark scheme for that, then um, M one four method to calculate the cost of five hundred grams of cheddar. So, uh, so that we pick up that first M mark for that part there. Uh, second method mark for subtracting that. So that's the second method mark. And then um, M1 for complete method to find the cost of one kilogram of uh, Hilton. So M1 and then A1 for £8.50. Okay, um, so I'm going to stop the video there. Uh, we've reached 10, so it keeps my file size down. And it also means if you're watching these videos, uh, you can navigate to specific questions much quicker.